you have a for-profit firm, they look at their financial statements at the end of the quarter, they're earning a profit, that's indicating to them that they are providing something that is adding value to society. Mm -hmm. uh, a negative profit or a loss indicates the opposite. Bureaucracies, however, they're not competing for profit or loss. They are competing for government resources, mm -hmm. so pieces of some larger budget. Uh, how do they convey that they should get a bigger piece of that budget, that they should have more personnel? By taking on more and more activities which are important to the powers that be. If I'm a government agency and I go to you as the federal government and I say, hey, I can do the exact same job that I'm doing with 20% less money, uh, the next year, I'm going to have 20% less in yeah. my budget, uh, which is not what you're incentivized to do uh, as somebody operating a bureaucracy. Now, this doesn't mean that the people who are working in the government are necessarily you know, terrible people mm -hmm. who are sitting there wringing their hands trying to get as much money as possible. Uh, but as an economist, we look at that and we say, well, this is the incentive structure that they face. So how did that system get built? I mean, how did this come to be? It I'm not an economist, but it sounds quite Ridiculous. I would want something that was slim and trim and took as little from the people as possible and that could, you know, every year become more efficient and need less resources and all that. And that's quite literally the reverse of what we have. One thing about uh, this bureaucratic system is that there is that incentive to expand. Um, but there's actually an entire branch of economics called constitutional political economy, which is trying to answer the question of if we want something like a government who will provide quote unquote national defense or roads or education, whatever you want to put in that bucket. Um, how do we construct a political system where we can empower our leaders to do the things that we want them to do mm -hmm. and yet simultaneously constrain them oh, right. to not go outside of those uh, stated confines that we would prefer or yeah. those functions that we want them to fulfill. Do you think there's any kind of functional way to roll back some of that? I mean, if you wanted to get the system, if you wanted to have a fair bidding process or something that was gonna be a little more fiscally responsible or any of that, is it possible to roll back things that are in, inside of such a massive complex as, as you're mentioning? I would like to say that I think anything is possible. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that I think it's particularly likely. Yeah. Um, you have massive entrenched interest. Um, there have been uh, tanks, for example, that the military has said for years, we do not want them. Yeah. Uh, and yet, they continue to be manufactured and they are quite literally sitting in a compound somewhere and they are just rusting. Yeah. Why are we still manufacturing these? It's because the places where they're manufactured, their elected officials, keenly aware of the fact that if they uh, shut down these factories, some of their constituency is going to be unemployed. That does not bode well for their re-election. Yeah. Uh, they fight really hard to keep those things in place. And so you're fighting those battles yeah. at so many different junctures. Um, I'm honestly not really sure what it, would, what it would take. Yeah, how could you even start to fight that at the political level? Because you'd have to have a politician who'd be willing to say to his own people, you're gonna lose some jobs because it's the, Unfortunately, in this case, it's the right thing to do. Right, and that's... We don't get many politicians like that, do we? No, um, yeah. and there's actually a famous economist named F.A. Hayek, who in chapter 10 of his book, The Road to Serfdom, mm -hmm. talks about uh, why the worst get on top. So why it is that you are unlikely to have those kinds of political officials get into place. Because the people who are going to seek out those positions and people who are going to, importantly, be successful in those positions mm -hmm. are not Never to the people that. who are going to say, uh, let's take one for the team uh, and roll, roll back these policies.